Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. Today we're going to pick up on our AO Smith analysis. We're going to make a part two video and potentially a part three video. So we're going to go into macro trends. We're going to try and plug in projections that we feel comfortable with and see where we want to buy the stock. And then for the third for the part three of AOS, we are going to go into the charting and see if our evaluation, our discounted cash flow, matches up with the chart where we want to buy. And then we will go from there. So before I get into this valuation, first I'll say I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and it's for entertainment purposes only. Okay, so getting into this video, we're going to go over the macro trends. I have not looked at anything yet. I'm going to type in AOS. We're going to start with just revenue. That is our first thing that we are focused with here. Now I can see their year to date, they have benefited. They that is some higher growth compared to their five and ten year average. So we're going to decipher if that is sustainable. Okay, so I can see that this is a very large increase in revenue. Now remember, this is the year 2020 to 2021 but now in these last couple quarters they've pretty much continued uh, this revenue growth so that's very impressive especially in the hard times that we've had so far in the year 2022 so I uh, yeah th this is very impressive now you can see from the year 2011 to the year 2018 pretty consistent growth all the way through this and then from 2018 to the beginning of 2020 we had a short-term decline but then right back to it and they've been growing very fast in revenue so yeah before I put these revenue numbers in, I'm actually going to go over to some of the margins and see if their margins have absolutely spiked as well now I can see here's that 2018 fall now their net margins their net profit margins did not decline by too much even in even though their revenue declined greatly during those years and they've still stayed pretty consistent right around these double digits so off first glance I'm already gonna say that you know I can expect 10 to 13 percent net profit margins and I can see they did have a a nice spike in operating so becoming more profitable but now they've kind of flattened out right here are they going to be able to hold this or is it going to and i can see even prior to the year 2018 they were consistently right around this 17 percent so that, that's very interesting that they've been able to keep this up especially uh going forward into 2022 uh lastly i'm going to look at the pe of the company now i can see here is their big spike of the revenue and earnings that they've been having the last couple of years and I can see their PE is pretty much consistently been right around this range right here okay so very very interesting stuff right here the question that you're gonna have to ask yourself is this sustainable right here now you could have been saying back here is this sustainable and you could have said no but they they continued this revenue growth for seven years so pretty damn impressive right there but, you know, I still wouldn't be surprised if this revenue started flattening out too much. So I can see down here at the bottom, 10, 20, 29, 28, 19, 27, and now only 12. So first, before I go in and plug these numbers in, my job is to be conservative here. I'm not going to use double-digit growth going forward, but I am going to use revenue growth. I'm not expecting it to flatten out. <clears throat> So for our 10-year analysis, I said my job is to be conservative, and this is what I'm plugging in for annual numbers. I'm going to use 4, 6, and 8. I feel very confident in, the, in plugging those numbers in, and I do not have a crystal ball. For all I know, they could uh, grow their revenue faster than this. For all I know, they could uh, be declining revenue going forward. I do not know, but my job is to be conservative, and I feel good with these numbers. So next, like I mentioned with the profit margins, we can go back real quick and look at that. Price ratios, uh, nope, uh, margins. I can see they've been consistent over the last four or five years. They've been consistent right around this. No huge spike. Like right here, look, they had a huge spike and then reverted right back down to their mean. 
and then they had this consistent growth in net income, and now they've been just right around this ballpark range. So I feel very good plugging in numbers around that. You know, we'll go 10 and a half, 12, and 13 and a half. 13 and a half. I feel really good putting those numbers in. Now, actually, this is, like I said, be, my job is to be conservative. I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to, if they're able to continue growing their revenue like this, I wouldn't be surprised if these profit margins actually were a little bit higher. But for free cash flow margin, we're going to use these same numbers. 13.5. Now, PE. Now, I'm matching up this PE with their growth. I'm not as focused with their average PE right in right in around here. Now I can see they've consistently been around these 20s. I am not going to plug in 20s into my model because my job is to be conservative. And uh, real quick, we'll go back over to the revenue. Now the revenue that they've posted over their last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quarters has been pretty much a double digit growth. Now I'm calculating in single digit growth. Now this isn't going into the earnings and looking at forward statements either, so I could do that and um, put that into a model, but I'm trying to get a ballpark range right here. That will potentially be in a part three video. So looking at this, I can understand uh, why the price of earnings is up here because for this growth down here, I'm willing to pay that, that 20s PE for a company, but I'm not calculating that double digit growth going forward. So I'm actually going to be probably down in these higher teens, mid-teens range for this growth. So I'm actually going to go, uh, we'll go 12, 14, 16. Now I, that is being very conservative. I'm, only, I'm just trying to show good examples of being conservative. And I know that's underneath their five-year average. If I go back to their metrics, their five-year average is 24. So I, I could be a little bit more um, generous. I could go 14, 16, 18 if I'm willing to pay a premium for this company. But I still feel like that's a little bit on the higher side. So for this example, I'm actually going to stay a little bit more conservative. Price in a little bit more margin of safety. Because I'm trying to preach being conservative. And then we want our 15% return. Now we want that 15% return because... If I'm not confident I'm going to get a 15% return in an individual company, I'm just going to buy VT or VXUS, a broadly diversified index fund, and I'm not even going to worry about it. I don't have to worry about, uh, okay, they over the next five years, their revenue declined. I don't have to worry about that because I'm buying the world's economy. So we have our numbers plugged in. So let's hit analyze and see where we're sitting. Okay. So... Uh, if I believe these high assumptions, I'm really interested in the stock around 50 bucks, and middle assumptions 36 bucks, low assumptions 25 bucks. Now, with this company in particular, I'm actually going to plug in a little bit higher numbers for a second uh, model, real quick, and I'm going to use 12, 13, and 14, 12, 13, 14. Now, for this a little bit higher bit of revenue, I'm going to pay a higher PE. Okay, so I have a little bit higher PE. So, okay, I can see if I believe these high numbers that they can uh, put up double-digit growth, I'm I'm actually starting to get very interested in the stock. Uh, yeah, pretty good stuff right here. I, I've been pretty impressed with A.O. Smith since I started my analysis on this. Now, I will say I do not have an individual holding in this company. I may own it in uh, my VT index. I don't know. But, yeah, the... Not not a bad first start to uh, this new evaluation in A.O. Smith. This is going to wrap up the video. I'm going to add this to my watch list in this Everything Money. So I'm going to hit that add button. Now this is going to notify me if A.O. Smith ever gets down to this price range. And that will be potentially where I f do further analysis into the company. But for right now we're going to have that $48 right into our watch list. Uh, and this is going to wrap up the video. I am going to make a part three on the video going through the charting. And uh, yeah, hopefully that video is out uh, shortly after I post this video, but it will definitely be out later today. Hope you guys like the video and I'll see you on the next one.